Good morning, Edinburgh. How are you? Last night, I uh, spent the evening with a, a stranger, uh, a redhead called Karen. Uh, it's okay, my wife knows all about this. And uh, Karen was organizing a firewalk for a local charity. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody has ever done a firewalk before, if you uh, know, have any knowledge at all about it. Uh, the human skin will start to evaporate at 300 degrees Celsius. Sorry, Fahrenheit, I beg your pardon. Aluminium will melt at 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. The particular firewalk last night in aid of charity uh, was measured at 1,236 degrees Fahrenheit. So, what was it that you know, Karen instilled in me that made me think that I was going to be safe and not just be like a sausage on a barbecue? <coughs> Last night, there was 18 of us walked over these uh, hot embers, 1,236 degrees Fahrenheit, and this was predominantly based, as I said, on spending some time two hours before the event with a lady called Karen who was coaching us and helping us and making sure that our minds were in the correct state. And, and we were uh, really grateful that we managed to achieve that. And it got me thinking about this thing called trust and how important it is because ultimately we had to we had to put an awful lot of trust and faith in Karen in what she was saying because none of us had ever done this before. And it sort of cemented my belief in what I'm going to talk about today, which is the, the, the major component in selling is our ability uh, to convey trust in others. And why is sales so important? You guys are all young entrepreneurs. And at some stage, you were going to leave this university, and you're predominantly going to take one of two routes. One route will be a path to employment, where you'll be working for another company, and that's fantastic. But to get that employment, you're going to have to go through some form of interview process, which will involve you selling yourself. The other group of you may want to start your own business. Uh, the theme of this event is Young Entrepreneurship. And every business is selling something. And unless we can sell something, sales is the lifeblood of any business, and we're always going to struggle. Robert Louis Stevenson wrote, everybody's selling something. And two or three months ago, we come back, uh, some uh, colleagues and I, we came up with this idea because there is nowhere in Scotland where young graduates and young entrepreneurs could go to learn the skills of professional selling. There are numerous courses, uh, a one-day master class. Uh, if I invited you all to a one-day class to learn Spanish and said at the end of that class you'd be a master at speaking Spanish, nobody would believe me. So attending a one-day class in sales is fantastic. I'd urge you all to do that but it's never going to be a master class, and all it is is a, a, some foundation stones to get you on the, the, the right path. So what we came up with was this idea to create a sales academy where we could have young graduates who had taken on their first uh, job, and they're predominantly in jobs where the, the corporations did not have either the capacity uh, or the culture of coaching. So rather than stick someone in a new sales job and allow them to fail, we wanted a place where we could coach and nurture these graduates. And also we wanted a place where young entrepreneurs who were starting their journey in business could understand how important sales was and understand about the basics of selling. And when we got talking to all our customers and clients, they thought it was a fantastic idea. And we started to ask them about, really what were the foundation stones that they would like to see in terms of the, the things that we would be teaching these graduates. And again, the question of trust came up. And when we talked about trust, it was interesting that all of our clients had a slightly different uh, definition of trust. Everybody was using different words. And we then had the problem of, well, if we cannot define it, how are we going to teach it? 
How are we going to create a really strong learning and development program if we cannot define it ourselves? And after two or, three, two or three weeks, we still couldn't get our finger on it, how to do this accurately. So we decided to try and reverse engineer the problem. And we went back to our clients and said, you tell us about the things that the salespeople that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, tell us about the things that they do that you feel has violated your trust. And it was really interesting the things that they came back with because then we began to be able to get a shape and an idea of the things that collectively salespeople were doing that would violate the trust of the buyer, which then made the buyer choose one salesperson over the other. So there were five components which typically uh, the, the, the feedback that we were getting from the clients, that all the comments fell into one of five categories. The first one was time. And time is hugely important for a salesperson because we have typically only 40 selling hours in the week, and we have to be really, really great at time management. And there's a, 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 if you go to any organization and ask them, are your salespeople busy? They will say, absolutely. Most salespeople are working 50, 60 hours a week. If you ask the chief executive the question, are your salespeople busy? He'll say yes. Are they effective? He'll say, hmm, not so sure. Busy does not equal effective. And time, you know, time is one of these things that we want. Uh, we want the most, but we sometimes we'd, we've got a habit of wasting it. And it's not just our own time management, it's simple things when we talk to our clients, salespeople who had the 10 o'clock appointment who thought it was okay to turn up at five past 10. Salespeople who had a 10 o'clock appointment for one hour who would carry on talking till quarter past 11. We need to be respectful of our client's time, not just our own time. The second thing that we talked about with our clients was the idea of reliability. It's not enough in sales, it's not enough in entrepreneurship just to be able to talk the talk. We absolutely have to be able to walk the walk. And when we're in meetings and when we agree next steps uh, at the end of those meetings, we need to be able to deliver on those next steps. And a really simple example of this was we were coaching one particular salesperson who would go into a meeting uh, discussing uh, something not particularly uh, appealing like IT services and had a really productive meeting with the head of IT, the business owners, and would then leave with the next step of having to go away and create a written proposal. Unfortunately, that particular person took around 10 working days to get that written proposal back. And it just sent the wrong message to the buyers. And when they called them back, it was as simple as, oh, I'm sorry, we went with somebody else. So we have to be reliable. We have to be there to be relied upon. In sales, too often, salespeople are focusing on uh, themselves, our commissions, our goals, our targets, our hopes, and our dreams. If we truly want to be successful, we need to have a completely different mindset and focus on the customer. The customer is the most important part of the relationship, not us. And we have to be able to put aside the pressures that our, our management are putting on us, the pressures that the bank manager's putting on us, and we have to think of what's best for the customer. And we have, the, have to have the inner strength to walk away from some business because in our heart of hearts, we know it's, there's just not the right fit for the customer. And that's difficult. Having that courage to just walk away and say, I appreciate your uh, interest in this. However, I just don't think we're the right person, we're the right company for you. It's difficult to do that. And unselfishness is also about giving. We have to be prepared to give back, give back to charity, give back to society. Emerson's law of compensation. The more you give, the more you will receive. When we talk to, to our clients about the actual uh, product knowledge that the salespeople that they encountered uh, owned, 
there seemed to also be a, 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 a sort of, it was falling short somehow. And what they were talked about with the soundness is the soundness of their knowledge. How much did they know about the industry they were in? How much did they know about their products and services? How much did they have in what we call domain knowledge? And it's interesting, all our clients wanted to talk to experts. And if you think to yourself, that's, that's maybe a little bit out of my reach. It's a little bit out of my reach being an expert. I'm only at university. There was a study by an American university that if you read and could absorb the top three books from the experts in, the, in your chosen industry, if you could then write up the notes from those, and you could then be, uh, teach that to uh, other people, you would become in the top 10% in terms of knowledge in that industry. And that's the definition of an expert. And I think you'd agree, especially at university, it is quite achievable to go out, find three books from the leaders in your chosen profession, and read those books and absorb them, because that's what you guys are doing. But you need that product knowledge, because your customers will want to deal with experts. Truthfulness. Sometimes it's difficult to tell the truth because it can in some way show us in a bad light. You only have one reputation. You will only ever have one reputation. And you should guard that with honor. And even if the truth is going to damn you, I would say you're much better off just facing up to it. And the truth won't win you every client, but it will help you win the best clients. And we all have varying degrees of the truth. I've always thought of myself as a very truthful person until one of my students one day asked me the question, I know you've got children, Ian. Can I ask, did you ever tell your children about Father Christmas? And I had to think to myself, you know what? Maybe I'm not as truthful as I thought I was. So there are different shades of truth. But as long as you can look yourself in the mirror in the morning and say that you absolutely did the best for yourself and for your client, that's the truth. Because it's not just about being truthful with your clients, it's about being truthful to yourself. And if we, if we looked at that, and we talked earlier, as we talked earlier about trust, it was interesting that it actually fitted in quite neatly. And just in case you're wondering, 1,236 degrees, no burns, only muddy feet. Thank you.